Hello and welcome, my name is Baruch Seiper and in a series of video tutorials I'm going to, going to attempt uh, to teach you how to make a database, database driven website using ASP.NET with Microsoft Visual Studio with the help of a data set and I'm going to explain what these things mean as we go along. So I have here open Microsoft Visual Studio but I think you could do the same with Microsoft Visual Web Developer Express and let's start by adding a new website and a website and uh, let's leave it at website too that's fine this starts out by creating a default ASPX but before we start actually building this website this uh, this web page there's a couple of things we need to add first we need to create a database with a couple of tables in there uh, I will be using as an example a students table and a teachers table and we'll create a data access layer by adding an SXD so the first thing we need to do is go ahead in the solution explorer right click and add a new item and well, we it's need to six o'clock. Thank you. Uh, we're going to need a SQL server database. And we're going to call it database MDF. That's fine. Click yes. There are no tables in there, so we're going to add a new table. And this is going to be the students table, so we're going to do is add a student ID this is going to be integer and we need to make this an identifier and a primary key basically whenever you add a new record to the database for students it's gonna increment it by one so the first is gonna the first uh, record is gonna be with a student ID one and the next one is gonna automatically be two and so on so this is an identifier you see I want I scroll down to the identity, identity specification, clicked on the plus sign, is identity, and checked it off to yes, and the rest will leave the same. And then next is going to be first name. This is going to be NVAR char 50, that's fine. And last. Oops, name. And then we're going to add another field called teacher. Okay. Oh, let's change this to NVAR chart 50. And this one as well. NVAR chart 50. That's fine. And one more thing we need to do is we need to set the student ID to primary key. It's fine. And let's add another one. Add new table. Well, you know, the first thing we should have done here is to save this table and call it, call it students. Okay. And the second table is going to be the teachers. So, again, let's go down to the identity. Click on the plus sign, select yes, right, and it's going to be first, and let's add maybe a class, what class this teacher teaches, and then we're going to do control S to save this, and we're going to call this teachers, okay, that's great. Now we could close the server explorer at the moment and we need to add one more thing to our website is I'm gonna go again to the solution explorer and right click at the top and click on add new item we need to add a data set which is gonna be our SXD okay uh, so I'm gonna leave it leave the name at default data set one and click on add click on yes right click inside this file 
add table adapters. Okay, database MDF it picks automatically. It's going to ask me if I want to save the database connection string, and I say yes. Use SQL statement, that's fine. Then we'll go, go to the next. We need to specify an SQL statement. For this, we can use a query builder. So I'm going to click on the query builder, and I'm going to add the student's database and click on close. And I like to check off each one separately as opposed to saying all columns. And I'm going to say OK. Everything looks good with this SQL statement. Click on Next. Fill, Get By, that's fine. Next. No errors. And it created a Select, Insert, Update, Delete. And that's one of the advantages of using an SXD is that it creates all these statements for us. And we just couldn't we could uh, call upon them later on in our VB code. So let's finish. Now we added the students table. Let's add another table adapter. And this of course is going to be, we click on next here, again query builder. This is going to be our teachers table. Add, close. Oh well, I see one little problem here. And that is that I didn't make the teacher's ID as a primary key. And that might cause us some problems later on. So I'm going to go back and fix this right away. DBO teachers. Right click, set as primary key, the teacher ID. Um, let's see if that helped any. Teachers add. Yes, now we have the teacher EC close. Now we have the teacher ID in bold, which is showing that it's a primary key. And that is very important many times. I check off all the all the fields, click OK. And now uh, I want to be able to later on to refer to 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 be able to pull up the teacher's full name, which is basically the first name with a space in the middle and then the last name. And the way I'll be able to do it later on, I'm going, I'm going to do it right away as I'm creating this table adapter. I'm going to, at the end of the select statement, right before the from, I'm going to do a comma space. Then let's copy over the first name, just to make sure there's no typos. Control C, Control V, first name, then we'll do play. Then we'll do a, a plus sign, then we'll do a single quote, a space, and a single quote. So that stands for a space, then plus, and then we're going to copy over the last name. Field, control C, control V, and I'm going to call this field name as full Oops, full name. Okay, great. Next, next. There are no errors. And then we are finished. Great. Thank you for watching part one. Stay tuned for part two where we're actually going to start editing the default ASPX.